welcome to the brain fit at talks today we are conversing with dr professor r k sinha who is currently serving as vice chancellor of nalanda open university he is also popularly known as the dolphin man of india let us talk to him to to know more about him so hello sir how are you i am okay thank you so the first question is like uh, many of our audience would like to know because uh, the because you are very much famous for uh, saving the dolphins so among all the animals why did you select like what ignited that interest that you you thought that you should save those dolphins like what was the particular instance actually <clears throat> it is not general dolphin it is a ganges river dolphin okay. which is uh, very unique and very rare because throughout the world we have only three species which is, which are the freshwater dolphin and ganges dolphin is one so <clears throat> it all happens like this because in early childhood maybe at the age of 10 8 or 10 years first i saw dolphins ganges dolphin which locally known as soos so uh, i saw a number of dolphins later on i joined for my higher education in patna university in 1970 those days whenever i was finding leisure time I was going to Bank of Ganges because Patna entire Patna is located on the Bank of Ganges, so it was very easy for me to pass some time on the Bank of Ganges, watching over the river and uh, surfacing of dolphins. Over the time, <clears throat> after say late seventies, late seventies, I completed my education and I became uh, university teacher. so that time by that time i found that uh, number of dolphin is declining but i never knew those days that it is dolphin mm. i knew a local name only so i asked the fisherman why they are declining because i had started my phd work on ganga hydrobiology of ganga so i was always with the fisherman on in, on the river so they told me that they are killing these animals and uh, they are mammals and this mam the baby suckles milk and like that so many information they pass on because i had never learned through books any information about ganges river dolphin so i thought i was i am a student of zoology and throughout my even up to master degree course i never had any information in books or some literature of label so I, it became a lot of uh, curiosity in 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 my mind that i i, I was asking fisher men and also i was thinking the way it is being killed unless until i do some conservation effort what is the use of my scientific research mm. only scientific research will not save the dolphin i must do right. some conservation efforts yes. so that's a very interesting information now moving to the higher education part because yeah. you are serving as a vice yeah. chancellor of a very yeah. big university the uh, nalanda open university we know its history where it started yes. from yes. and yes. we also know that it's the second largest yeah. open university after itu yeah. so how do you feel about it sir? yeah i feel very proud no doubt about it and i had been associated as a student as a teacher in conventional university when i got the opportunity to serve open university as its vice chancellor i took it as a challenge and also it gives me a immense pleasure to inform you that nalanda open university is one university in whole of a state where at least sanctity of examination mm. academic calendar examination schedule is followed very very strictly while everything is very strong in its place and we are very happy to know that everything is conducted very strictly yeah yeah everything. from very beginning from very beginning the problem with the distance education is that the only important thing is that to engage a student while a student reads the curriculum the whole point of learning happens when a student is engaged for a particular period on a particular subject with open distance learning what happens is that we don't have a exact control over engaging the student so what what strategies as a whole no, what ha- what ever, happens in in convention in conventional university there is a very limited scope for admission for the students with limited seats in open university there is no limit of seat there is no limit of age so we are getting many students who are already working somewhere they are in job or after retirement also they are coming with 
their own interest okay so when somebody is coming for some education with own interest definitely you will find that there there is no pressure and they don't leave any stone unturned to do better so you're going to say that because there's no pressure so students will be eager to learn naturally they, they are eager naturally. to learn and they're doing very well also. yeah they're doing well Sir, but what happens is that usually see when, when a student completes after 12 parent or student he feels that because for at the end for everyone uh, the end thing is to get a job so do you think that uh, in the job applications if somebody writes that they have passed a degree out from open universities are those things taken seriously yeah look like, the mhrd and university grants commission they have already uh, done gadget notification that the degree from conventional university and Open university is the same. But in case you know. it's like there, somebody is applying to corporate, for corporate even, even corporate, even corporate. So do you think that both will be given similar? Yeah, they are getting they are getting job because even corporate are not selecting them from uh, based on university, rather based on performance in the examination, on interview, on the written test. So there so will we, not be any bias. So either. there is no bias. <laughs> Why there should be bias? Ah, right, right. Because nowadays, even a student getting ninety percent marks is not able to. Um, compute in the examination is not getting selected right. whereas maybe 50 percent uh, who had got in, in their bachelor degree or master degree becoming IAS no problem <laughs> so that's a very good indication so what according to you are uh, three most important soft skills like a youth should have in order to get a job uh, look nowadays not only this is age of information technology now a, a, age is going to be artificial intelligence Yes. Machine learning, big data, like that. And hopefully another 5-10 years, the entire job scenario will change. Because now nobody is going to a point as a clerk or like that. It's very difficult. So every student, maybe any subject, he has to be some computer friendly, he has to have some software uh, skill, he has to have internet. And some kind of information technology. Otherwise, it is going to be a biggest challenge. Hmm. So I'm happy that at least in my university we have good experts on computer and information technology. So many students are doing the BCA or MCA in our university. So that's why uh, the coming days, maybe history or geography, any student he has to have some computer knowledge. Even we are appointing the multi-tasking uh, staff, even fourth grade, he must know some computer that at least he can close the computer, he can own the computer. This much he should know. So that if some computer has been kept open, he can at least close in the evening time. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, is there anything else you would like to share with our audience? Because our audience are mostly youth. Like uh, who, yeah, who for, for youth, I have only suggestion that look, what is the situation that number of youth so vast in our country and job doesn't mean government job. Okay. And the student or the youth should always prepare themselves with full confidence to enter into either job market or self-employment. Self-employment is the best employment. Mm -hmm. I have seen many people from IIM Ahmedabad after passing, after doing some year job, they are they have started their own job. So many are coming from with this intention. So if a student has some this kind of mindset, mm -hmm. not that I should become Babu in an office. Mm -hmm. If he say he has this kind of mindset, and there is a potential in every student, maybe he may not be fit to be a scientist. He is fit to be an artist, he is fit to be a magician, he is fit to be agriculture scientist or even dairy group. So if students are ready and think that there is no difference, one should not feel ashamed that he became government, he went to government job, I am doing some practice in village, then he will be always happy.